We're live. We're live and we're late. Uh, I apologize. I'm sorry about that, guys. We are late. Uh, that's what happens when you're on the phone with a client and and they don't want to get off. They don't want to get off. They don't want to keep talking, keep doing stuff. But we are live. Uh, this is Art Talk, episode 12. Uh, hopefully you guys are hanging out still on Facebook. Uh, Robert, good morning. Uh, Bob, thanks for joining us. This is Art Talk, episode 12. Uh, we're running a little bit late today. I am I do my best to try and hit 8 o'clock, but sometimes, you know, you have clients and you have people that are that are kind of, um, you know, adamant about solving a problem, and sometimes you can't necessarily get on track. And I, I might even miss, miss Art Talk from time to time, but I just want to make sure that I get on and help you guys uh, start your day off right. Good morning, Yvonne. Uh, I hope you guys are having a great Thursday. Today is Thursday. For some of you, it might be trash day. I don't know. Tuesday's trash day for me. That's that's when I, you know, take all the stuff out. Um, I got some fresh juice today. It doesn't look very good. It looks pretty disgusting. But Kathy is pretty amazing about... Um, <laughs> uh, Yvonne said, good morning. I panicked that I miss you. No, don't, no, no stress. No worries. Uh, also, this always goes up on YouTube so you guys can watch it. Uh, but there's something fun about being live, right? There's something fun. Uh, good morning, Donna Phillips. Uh, let me know where you guys are from. Where are you tuning in from? Uh, as a reminder, I am Fireball and this is Art Talk at 8. I'm going to move my chair forward a little bit more. Um, I specifically wore my, because of the way I shoot, everything is backwards, as you can see here. My little sign back there is backwards. But I wore my shirt inside out so that you could see it in the right way. You know, isn't that cool? Kind of kind of stylish. Mm -hmm. Kind of like it. Okay. Uh, what do we have? Uh, we have Danny Simmons. Um, what are we talking about? We're gonna, we have an interesting subject today. Um, uh, I'm going to get into it in just a second. I'll give you the title. It's Longevity in Passion. Longevity and passion. Let that percolate for a second. But uh, before we get to that, uh, we do, if you guys are unaware, we have the classic auto show happening this weekend at the OC Fairgrounds. That's going to be pretty spectacular. I'm going to be there on Saturday, poking around, looking at all the car clubs. Uh, going to be having a spectacular time. We're going to be hanging out with uh, Bob Beck, Randy Cardoon. Uh, Chip's going to be there. All kinds of really amazing people are going to be there. Uh, if you are local, you should come to that show. That's on Saturday. And if you're going on Sunday, and in you're in the northern area like Oxnard, Ventura, Channel Islands, uh, Santa Barbara. Uh, hit Wheels and Waves on the way down Sunday morning. This is my Wheels and Waves show. It's free coffee, uh, free Hot Wheels. Uh, get oh, Danny's pretty excited. Get to it. Uh, okay, um, uh, let's uh, let's move forward. But um, uh, keep in mind, we don't have uh, have a lot of time with you guys, but we have a lot of things to say. Okay. So let's get to the subject because uh, Danny's pretty excited about it. Uh, Tiffany, good morning. Longevity and passion. Longevity and passion. How important is it to have passion for what it is that you do? Uh, I know a lot of people say that. I know a lot of people say that uh, you got to be excited about what you do and, and, and it's important to love what you do. But it's, it, sometimes we have to ask ourselves why. Why is it so important? that we love what we do. And, and that comes down to longevity because when you do something that you love that, and it's not work, it ends up not being perceived of as work. It's something that you would do normally. Uh, Bob Sands, he's from Long Island, New York in the house. Passion. Yeah, boy. Very nice. You have to be passionate. Um, but, uh, the longevity, the, the thing about longevity is that if you're excited and you're passionate about something, then you don't worry about time. Time is not of a concern. Uh, Dennis Burnham, good morning. Um, and, and that's important because uh, time is a concept that humanity has created. Uh, you know, our nine to five, uh, moving forward, we get older, all these perceptions are about how time flows and time moves. But the truth is that time doesn't move. Time just exists only in the moment, in this moment with you guys hanging out with me here on Art Talk and nothing else really matters unless you give it value, unless you say, I don't have enough time to do this. Uh, there's some people that can't necessarily attend our talk, so they gotta get busy and go do things, and they're on a schedule. And, but these are all, all concepts that we've created because we exist in society, in a city, and in our towns, and we do have time frames. We gotta get our kids to school on time, we gotta get to work, we gotta do these things. So we are consumed by time. Now, when you come home, 
uh, or on the weekends, uh, lots of people, when I do, uh, when I give talks and I do Toastmasters and things like that, uh, people say, how do you find your passion? Well, you, you don't really find your passion because you're already doing it. You don't necessarily know that you are. Now, when you, the way that I try to work through it is that on the weekends, uh, uh, what do you like to do? What is, what are you most passionate about? Generally, people uh, can let work go during the week and on the weekends, they kind of do what it is that they like to do. Unless you're fortunate enough to be retired, you got a bunch of money and you can do that stuff every single day. Uh, I do my best to live and breathe what I love on a daily basis, which is why I'm hanging out with here with you guys. But longevity comes in because... If you pick something that you love, if you identify what you already love in your life and you're already doing, then the only thing that you have to answer is how can you give that to the world? How can you take what it is that you love, whether it's building cars or it's doing art as a creative person uh, or it's uh, building a business or it, uh, opening a store, a cafe, you know, what is it that you really like? Um, we were, Kathy and I were just joking the other day about what if we started a pie a pie store you know i mean pie is like not really big it used to be the 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 uh the pie house or, or whatever it was called um the royal pie house or uh, house of pies house of pies so you know how, pies used to be a really big deal and we started concepting on this idea that if we if we had a pie place what would we do and we were driving up to the murphy yesterday and we started thinking conceptually how how much fun it would be you know not about like all the difficulties of hiring employees and and all the challenges of building a business but what's the fun part the fun part what would be the name the name and we we kind of focused in and we we found out the name and the name would be shut your pie hole that's the name of the of the pie place we would call it shut your pie hole and or maybe just pie hole you know that kind of thing but can you imagine driving along pch and you pull up to this restaurant that looks like a pie, it's shaped like a pie, and they have pie hole cars and coffees uh, uh, on the weekends, and you can pull in there, you can grab a slice of maybe jalapeno cherry pie, or maybe a, a, a lemon meringue or orange meringue or something unique. You know, there's lots of fun stuff that you can do. Now, but you have to pick what you love. If you if you like baking and that's your passion, and you like making pies for your family and stuff like that, you start a YouTube channel. You know, start making your own your own pies, put it on YouTube. Um, uh, it doesn't matter what it is. Nowadays, there is no excuse to not be successful anymore because you have access to the world in things like this. Uh, Gregory Argo, good morning. Uh, how are you? Uh, let me know where you guys are from. Gregory, I'm not sure where you're from. Dennis, I know where you're from, buddy. Um, so longevity is important because it keeps you going. It keeps you going. It keeps you for the long haul. We're running a marathon, people, not a sprint, not a sprint. You're sprinting to work. You're sprinting back home so you can take care of you know, your kids and things like that. Lots of sprints within the day. But as far as your passions, your overall bigger picture, it's a marathon. It's a marathon because we want that longevity to stay there, that, to have that stickiness. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, let's move on. Um, finding what you love. We, we discussed a little bit about you know, finding what you love. And um, most people have this perception that what they love is out of reach. And it's not what you love. You've been doing pretty much your whole life. Uh, you started when you were a little kid. Uh, Greg is in, I'm in Clarinda, I Iowa. Very nice. Very nice. I hope the weather is nice in Iowa and you aren't freezing your ass off. Um, remember Kermit the Frog? Yes, I remember Kermit. Jerry, what does that have to do with uh, Iowa or the sun in Iowa? I don't, I don't know. I like Kermit. Yeah, excellent. Um, as a reminder, we are live, so you can interact, you can talk, you can mention weird things that don't make any sense, or they don't make any sense to me yet, okay? Uh, the other aspect is um, in finding your passion is probably the biggest challenge in implementing that passion is the your ability to stand your ground, your ability to to deal with criticism, uh, deal with negativity in this world, because a lot of people um, will look at your passion, your idea. I'm gonna move this over a little bit for a second. Okay, um, you know, people will will look at at what it is that you want to do, and they'll judge it, and they'll judge it not necessarily harshly. They won't criticize like, ah, oh, it's a stupid idea. But they may say, well, you know, you're gonna have to do this in order to do that, and you know, and I mean, you know, you can't just quit your job, and you just can't just let the kids go, and just, you know, all the reasons why you can't do these things. They're gonna make lots of suggestions because, in their mind, they're protecting you. They're trying to, they're trying to make sure that you stay realistic. I love the word realistic. Um, you should live your life unrealistically. 
completely unrealistically because realism is about the practicality of, of doing things and you can easily overwhelm yourself with all the reasons why you can't do something. And, um, you know, Kathy could say, I can't, I can't make juice. I don't have a juicer or I don't know how to make juice. And then lo and behold, she makes juice. Hmm. I know it looks really terrible. I mean, isn't that awful? It's like, almost like chocolate, but it's not. It's got beets and lots of green. And, you know, when you deal with color, it deals with, it's greens and reds make browns. And that's basically what, what that is. I think there's celery in there too. Uh, Chris Moody says, boom, shakalaka laka boom. Aloha from Germany. <laughs> there you go. There you go. People in Germany, kind of freaking weird, but that's okay. They're passionate. Uh, I know Chris is. Uh, Mr. Moody, uh, big time fireball says Chris Eckerson. Yes, Chris. Good morning. Um, uh, Chris gets to play with exotic cars down south. Newport, Newport Beach. Is that where you are? Um, uh, fantastic place. I hope I'll see you at the classic auto show in OC. We're going to be there on Saturday as a reminder. Um, we're also uh, today as a heads up today, I'm meeting with Lawrence Flinton. Uh, Lawrence is a, a professional chef. He has come to Wheels and Ways many times. And Lawrence is a very good example of somebody who is living their passion. He cooks for a living and he cooks in amazing, amazing dishes for people. We're going to have him on the vlog. So tomorrow's vlog, we're going to be able, be able to feature him. He's driving an M4, I think, something like that. Uh, we're also doing an article for the newspaper on him. Uh, he is the sponsor, Strictly Business Motorsports, is the sponsor for Wheels and Waves this weekend. So we're featuring Lawrence. Um, uh, he has uh, created many dishes for me. Uh, amazing guy. Uh, Rancho Santa Fe is Chris Eckerson, of course. Rami Brochot, uh, good morning. How are you? Did I mispronounce that? Brochot? Uh, sounds French? Maybe? Maybe? Okay. Okay. Um, we are talking about longevity and passion. You know, for myself, um, as a child, I loved cars. And cars as a overall picture is a very large scope thing. There are millions of things that you can do with cars. And over a period of time, I did do lots of different things. You know, in high school, I was drawing cars in the back of, back of class. I got many of them taken away, unfortunately, because I would have liked to have kept them. Um, but I kept that ball rolling. I went to college. Uh, to illustrate, to learn to be a better designer, didn't know about what I would do with that. Lo and behold, found Art Center College of Design, went there to design cars, realized I didn't want to go to Detroit and design cars, rather go to someplace like Walt Disney Imagineering, which is where I went. And I designed all the rides and shows having to do with cars, things like the Indiana Jones ride, Autopia. Um, we did some stuff for uh, lots of things for Europe, uh, the, the roller coasters in um, Discovery Land, things like that. So I got to design a lot of really cool stuff over about a three-year period. You can see some of that stuff on my website at fireballtim.com under the gallery section. Um, and then then once we left Disney, I met my wife. We, we started our business. So we went into the film industry and I started storyboarding uh, movies and um, uh, designing cars for movies. And you can see that the longevity of my love for cars and designing cars kept on rolling, ended up designing cars for about 400 films. That's a lot of movies, you know, that's a lot of stuff for that marathon to kind of keep that passion going. And and that's important. Good morning, Johnny Martinez, uh, pinstriper to the stars. Yes. Uh, I also wanted to announce, there's a rumor. There's a rumor in the rumor mill for this weekend at Wheels and Waves. Only you guys know this. You may want to spread the word, but I got I got word yesterday that actor Michael Madsen is going to be coming to Wheels and Waves. He's bringing two Mustangs and his son's driving a Mustang. Uh, that's pretty exciting. I hope that that happens. Uh, you never know with, with actors, but uh, as it stands right now, he's going to be pulling into Malibu and have some coffee with us. So if you want to meet him and uh, see his cars, come join us, hang out. Uh, that's happening on Sunday morning. And uh, also the Saturday and Sunday is the classic auto show. So if you're going to see both of those, that's a good idea. It's a lot of cars in a weekend. Okay, so are you getting my drift about longevity and passion about how important that is. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, I did cars for movies, but then our business evolved and now we started a new business uh, a couple of years ago. My wife and I, Fireball Publishing, where we do these coloring books and uh, my love of cars is at an epic all time high. Uh, I just finished doing, well, this is not finished. I just started a sketch for our next book, which is Porsche. Porsche, you guys want to see the latest sketch for Porsche? I showed you kind of a half sketch yesterday of something else, but this one's a little more evolved. Um, I don't know, I was just kind of thinking, if, if, if there was a Porsche in Jurassic Park, what would it look like? 
right? I mean, that's kind of kind of crazy. So here's here's the beginning of the sketch. There's Jurassic Park. Can you see that? And as you go, so look at the Tyrannosaur. He's there. But also, there's the Mission E getting all juiced up, right? Right, getting all juiced up. Basically, the the idea is that he's getting a full charge in about 20 seconds, but the, the, the Tyrannosaur is about to come in. So it's that anticipation, that excitement, that insanity that you could get eaten at any moment. And that's always, it's always fun. Always fun to know that, you know, you might die at any moment. And uh, especially from a Tyrannosaur. That's good. So in finding your passion and finding uh, the answer for you, it's right in, front of your, right in front of your face. Right in front of your face, people. In fact, it's on the inside of your eyeballs. All you have to do is ask yourself what you love to do, what you're already doing. You could be restoring die-cast toys. You could be collecting clocks. You could be, it's, it's infinite. It's infinite. There are 7 billion people on this planet, soon to be 8 billion. And there's 8 billion different ideas, 8 billion different passions. It's, it's limitless. So you got to find, I'm not talking about trying to think of something you can sell, right? That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about if you do your passion and you continue to do it, not, not by sacrificing your job. I'm not saying quit your job and go, go find something you love. I'm saying that you can do them both. You can do them both. But as you put energy into something, this is the way the universe works. The more energy you put into something, the more shit starts to happen, right? Like right there. See, so get shit done. That if you worry about how it's going to evolve, then you get in the way. So you got to let it go. You just got to put as much energy, as much love into the thing that you're doing. And then suddenly things will start to appear. Right, Johnny Martinez? This is what I'm talking about. Johnny, he started pinstriping. Then lo and behold, just the other week, he was pinstriping a Von Dutch bike. It just kind of happened. Poof. Out of nowhere. Just kind of randomly. Right? And now, now he's doing epic stuff. Okay. And not only that, he's going to be one of our artists at the Fireball Gallery, May 11th. Uh, just spectacular. We just had a, a really good meeting yesterday at the Murphy Museum. We're going to be doing a street artist show also in the middle of next year. It's going to be one of the biggest. I'm not, I'm not talking about like big, like lots of people. I'm like, I'm talking about big art, like super pieces, super pieces, huge Huge art, some spectacular stuff going on. I just keep using that word. I just like that word, spectacular. Yeah, with a K. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's kind of it for today's art talk, episode eleven. Uh, we are always here uh, around eight a.m. in the morning. Um, sorry, I was a bit late, uh, as I, I'd like to blame it on clients, but you know, it's, you know, they're easy to blame it on. You know, it's a positive thing. But uh, I do my best to be here at 8. We have one more day in this week on Friday. I hope I will see you guys at the Classic Auto Show or at the at the uh, Wheels and Waves on Sunday. Uh, practice gratitude today, guys. I'm, I'm serious about this. I'm serious about this. If you want to change your life in any way, whether it's your health, whether it's your personality uh, traits, uh, thing, tr habits you want to get rid of, you want to improve relationships with, with friends, you want to become financially free, you want to, to grow in any direction, you got to stay focused, right? You got to stay focused, but you got to give, you got to uh, express gratitude as much as you, as you can and take that seriously. That's not a joke. This, that, that's the real deal. Um, sweet, my son is going to design my car graphics. Very cool, says Sassy Lorraine Parks. We also have Johnny at age 60 when I started my new career, I might add. That's right, Johnny started at 60. 60. Some people would say he's an old fart, but he's not an old fart because my dad is 91 and he's writing. He's still writing. He's been writing since the 60s. My dad is 91 and he's writing. He wrote his memoirs 20 years ago, right? So now... He's writing a, a screenplay, a, a new screenplay, and uh, all kinds of amazing stuff. Johnny says, have a great day, safe day. Uh, thanks for the great kickstart to my morning. You bet, Johnny. That's what we're here for. Okay, this is our talk, episode 11. Have a spectacular day, guys. I love you guys. I love all of you for joining me and hanging out today. It is what you make it, so make it awesome.